In the 1980s, 16-time world champion Ric Flair popularized the expression To be the man! <laughs> You've got to be the man! In professional wrestling games, the man has been the WWE 2K franchise, existing completely unchallenged for the better part of a decade. Newcomer AEW Fight Forever's challenge does not change the balance of power, but its audacity to try by leaning into arcadey design ideas from yesteryear and embracing a pick-up-and-play philosophy should be praised. It's the noticeable lack of genre-standard features, an underwhelming single-player campaign, and a smattering of mechanical bugaboos that take the legs out from under it. This fighter isn't ready for the main event just yet. In the style department, Fight Forever comes out swinging with cartoony character models and energetic animations. Most of the 52 available competitors have well-rendered caricatures, with Kenny Omega and John Moxley is among my favorites, even the ones that seem off, like an air fryer-shaped Chris Jericho, get the benefit of not needing to be realistic to get the appropriate vibe across. When they get busy in the ring, there's an almost Def Jam Vendetta-like exaggerated explosiveness to every bump, kick, and punch that ramps up the over-the-top nature of the aerials and acrobatics of wrestling in the way that comic books do for superhero violence. Outside of the lively animations, there's a small number of occasions where some moves can actually affect the way you play in cool ways that I haven't seen before in a game like this. For example, Grumpy Dutch Goth Kickboxer Malachi Black can spray black mist into opponents' eyes when he gets desperate. If you are on the receiving end, your controls will scramble for a few brief moments. I wish the style outside of the ring was as evocative. Most menus are clean, but not at all interesting. The very few voiceovers in Fight Forever mostly range from fine to terrible. Legendary wrestling broadcaster Jim Ross being among the worst offenders in this or any wrestling game. The start of a revolution in pro wrestling. If you're like me and like tooling around with the creative tools in wrestling games, you might find the creator wrestler in arena modes to be a bit bare bones. It's a jarring lack of facial diversity and barring some gems, very slim pickings in the cosmetics department. It also lacks in many of the quality of life features like being able to sort through moves by type, which means sorting through Fight Forever's menu of techniques to find the perfect coup de grace for your combatant can feel like a chore. I've come to like Fight Forever's in-ring action, but it's far from my favorite wrestling game. Quick movement and smooth animations give the action a uniquely frantic energy. The nuts and bolts of combat are simple in theory and will resonate with anyone who's played a wrestling game in the past. The punch, kick, and grapple buttons all do different moves when paired with the directional tilts from the movement stick and vary between weak and strong depending on if you tap or hold them, so there's certainly no shortage of options. Though it's very similar to current popular wrestling games, it lacks their polish and responsiveness. Sometimes a strike combo or grapple sequence goes off without a hitch. Occasionally, though, attacks just kind of miss inexplicably. Running, springboarding off the ropes, dragging opponents around the ring, or whipping them into the ropes are actions I particularly felt a constant disconnect with. Dimwitted AI pretty regularly does baffling things like standing completely still or walking aimlessly into opponents' corners. All of these problems are exacerbated when playing online against friends, where you can add frequent clipping and rubber banding at a rate that is frankly unacceptable. Where Fight Forever deviates from contemporary wrestling games and borrows from past genre heavyweights like WWF No Mercy is in the momentum system, which rewards varied offense and solid defense by getting you closer and closer to using your finishing maneuvers. Once your momentum meter is full, you are free to let loose your character's four signatures and special moves. These feel like true match-ending abilities, even when used pretty early. And if you're properly exploiting each wrestler's unique set of passive skills, you can find yourself with your big guns ready very quickly. Having low momentum, on the other hand, puts you in greater danger of losing matches through pain and submission. But this is separate from the opaque health and limb damage systems, which are also big factors in your chances of victory. Though it may seem intuitive that taking large amounts of damage over time will make you worse for wear, it's frustrating that there's nothing telling you exactly where you stand at all times. This frustration carries over to submissions and general recovery systems. When being stretched by opponents, a prompt will show up telling you to mash buttons to break free, but there's no indication of how much mashing you need to do to break free. When you're knocked down, the inclination is to mash buttons or move the stick to speed up your recovery, but there's really no telling if any of that actually works. Things like this don't have to be a mystery in order to keep the accessibility bar low. 
Another curious decision is that Fight Forever improves on the old Nintendo 64 era design of having two separate defense buttons, but maybe not enough to make a compelling argument for its further inclusion in the year of our Tribal Chief 2023. Either button, one for strikes and one for grapples, can be held down to block respective attacks or tapped to reverse them and open the enemy up for counterattack. Being able to hold and block grapple without having to have pinpoint timing is a great change. And having two defensive buttons versus one is a solid way to add another layer of mastery in one-on-one -on -one encounters, but in multi-person bouts, reading every different kind of attack and responding with the right button is all but impossible. Out of the limited match types offered, I primarily enjoyed the Anything Goes Hardcore Style Lights Out match largely because it showcases Fight Forever's unique and hilarious arsenal of weapons. Joining genre staples like the humble steel chair and kendo stick are rideable skateboards, brooms wrapped in barbed wire, and literal explosives. There is such a strong spirit of ridiculousness in the name of fun, especially in these matches, and that is something that's been missing from WWE wrestling games for a while now. As its big signature single-player mode, Road to Elite is an earnest yet disappointing attempt at reviving the old-school season modes reminiscent of the PS2 era of WWE wrestling games. After selecting a character, either from the roster of AEW talent or one of your own creation, you speedrun a year in the life of an AEW wrestler. You'll play through four months, each divided into weekly matches culminating in a big monthly pay-per-view event. I actually liked its brevity. I could do an entire run in only a couple hours, which is vital for a mode that stresses replayability. The stories your character will find themselves in are largely silly and bad, but not completely outside the bounds of pro wrestling. And unlike the My Rise mode in the 2K games, which often feature short, gimmicky subplots in service of a larger, overarching storyline, these are all just stop and start angles with no real meat on them. Stories can branch, allegedly depending on wins and losses. I'm on my third playthrough of Road to Elite, but I've only seen half of the 12 different stories available to find, with no real direction on how to see the others. Also, Road to Elite has some light management some elements that are a bit undercooked. During each week, you can do things like work out to gain skill points to boost your stats, go sightseeing to earn temporary motivation buffs for your next match, or sample some of the local cuisine and regain the energy it takes to do all of that. All of your skill points are completely useless if you choose a non-created character though, as their stats can't be changed. Created wrestlers start with the bare minimum and without any practice, new players are likely to get bullied by some of the top end fully equipped opponents that they'll be paired with and against early on. There's a bunch of potential in this mode, but it goes unrealized here. Unrealized potential feels like the story of AEW Fight Forever as a whole. So much of it feels like a very good start, going full gear with bouncy animations, the quick pace of the action, and fun, effective character design. But almost all of its good ideas are hampered by bugs and opaque or outright useless systems. Its big single player mode is poorly written and, though it's a relative breeze to complete and full of branching options, it's all out of good ways to point you to them. There's a strong foundation to bet double or nothing on in a sequel down the road, and I think there's still fun to be had here with like-minded friends who are content with casually beating each other up, but this is no wrestling game revolution. For more in the way of fists and feet, check out a review of Street Fighter VI. And for everything else, stick with IGN.